awesome because Jesus, He is the way, isn't He? He is the truth, isn't He? And He is the life. He is, he is everything. We, so we want to focus on Jesus. And today, I don't say this lightly, but this is to me one of the most important sermons that I think every church in America, and maybe the world, needs to really get to. And, and, and I'm very passionate about this because in my 10 years as pastor, I've seen where this is probably one of the greatest problems in the church. There's a lot of them, but I'm talking about in America. Not so much, I'm not just specifying our church, but in America, the church needs to come back to Jesus. They, they need, we need to, to uh, well, let me ask you a question first before I get into that part. What is the church in desperate need of more of? What, what does the church need more than anything? What, what, what does the church need? Love. But Jesus, I'm, I'm going to say this because Jesus is love. The church needs more of Jesus and less of the world. I hope you agree with that. We, we, need, we are different. We are, we are bought and paid and, and we, are, we, are, we are servants. We are slave bond servants to Jesus Christ. That's who we live for. John 3.30 tells us He, Jesus, must increase and we must decrease. We have to. And I ask this question, what would the church look like if we were full of Jesus? I'm not just talking about the leaders, I'm talking about everyone in the church. If every member of the church was full of Jesus, what would this church look like? Just, I can tell you a picture, of, I can give you, I can go right to a picture of what it'll look like. If you go to Acts, the early church was full of Jesus. And what happened in, in the early, at the early church? Turn the world upside down, and many, many souls were saved for Jesus Christ. And that's where we, we, we have lost, as the church of Ephesus, we have lost our first love. We have lost our, our zeal and our desire. It's become a self-centered church in America. I'm not, I'm not specifying us. Overall, if the shoe fits, there it is. But basically what I'm saying is that we've lost that zeal, that, that passion, that power that the early church possessed. And guess what? That same Holy Spirit that lived in the early church is in us. So that same Holy Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead is in us. That's what we possess. That's the power that we possess in Jesus Christ. And, and that should get you excited. The greatest need in the church today, without a doubt, is to be full of Jesus. Just full of Him. So today I want to preach a sermon that the church desperately needs to hear, but not only hear, put into practice, put into application, because uh, we are more than doers of the, we're more than hearers of the world. We want to be doers of the world. Amen. So the title of today's sermon is, as you see it, "Full of Jesus." And I hope when you leave out of here today, if you came here a little empty with something, I hope you leave out of here. Full of Jesus, because we're, that's what we're going to we're going to focus on one 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 verse, and even get even a little deeper than that. I'm only going to focus on one part of the verse, because I could spend probably three sermons just on this one verse. That's how how huge and and powerful it is. And so I'm not going to do that today. I, I just we're going to focus. So let's just look at the one verse, John 1:14, and it says, "And the word." Who's the Word? Jesus. Jesus. We've seen that in John 1.1. 1, 1. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. And the Word was God. Amen? Amen? And the Word became flesh. Just think about that right there. Jesus humbled Himself. Philippians 2 tells us that He, he basically stepped down out of heaven, came to earth as a baby. I mean, He came as a baby. How vulnerable is a little baby? I mean, and, and he was try, they tried to kill him, didn't he? They tried to kill him, even as a baby. Yes. So, uh, where am I at? And dwelt among us. He came down from heaven and dwelt and walked on this earth with us. For 33 and a half years, he was here on this earth. He, and, and if you think about it, he only ministered, as far as the ministry that we see here, 
for three and a half years. And look at what he did in three and a half years. Don't tell me you're too old to do something. Because Jesus did a lot in a little bit of time, didn't he? And we can do a lot in a little bit of time. And we have seen his glory. Glory as of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. And that's what I want to focus on today. The fact that Jesus came full of grace and truth. Okay? So let's pray. Father God, we thank you and praise you, Lord, as we come into your presence t today. Lord, we just, uh, we come with praise. Lord, we thank you for the worship music and, and the awesome job they did to prepare us to, to come and, and hear your word and, and to uh, just be in your presence, Lord. We, we're just so thankful, Lord. We know that, um, again, I, I never get tired of saying this, where two or three are gathered in your name, that there you are in the midst, Lord, that you're right here with us today, Lord. And that's why we're here. We're here because you're here. You're invited, and we want to we want to please you today, Lord. We, Lord, we, we're here not to please ourselves. We're here to please you. So, Lord, as we come together in your name, Lord, just help us to make you smile down from heaven on us, Lord. We want to we want to please you. We want to be a church that that's all about you, Jesus. We want to be full of you, Lord. So, Lord, Lord, we just pray for a fresh filling of your Holy Spirit power, Lord, to to fall down on us, Lord, to to fill us and and help us to. Uh, just connect with you and just just allow us to experience your presence in a, in a powerful way. Lord, show us your glory today, Lord. We need your glory. Lord, we just give you all praise today for what you're about to do here today through your word, Lord. And we just uh, we, we, we pray here a special prayer for if there's anyone here today that does not know you as Lord and Savior, that today would be the day of salvation, that today they would experience the Holy Spirit coming into them, Lord, and, and receiving you as Lord and Savior, Lord, surrendering their lives to you. And we give you all praise today. Of course, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, I want to look at a scripture. I was going to do like five verses, but I'm trying to keep this, I'm trying to keep it simple today. So we're going to go with, you, I want you to look at more verses on this, because this is such a, just a whole chapter. Colossians chapter 1, I'm going to do one verse. He is the image. Who are we talking about here? He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. Praise God. Scripture teaches us that salvation is by believing God's truth in the gospel, the gospel message, by which we receive His saving grace. I was saved through the power of the Word of God. When I read the Word of God, as a not, I could not believe how powerful the Word of God was. And I even said to people, if this is true, because I didn't know at the time, if this is true... This is the most powerful book I've ever read. This is the most powerful thing I've ever read. You know, because it's, it's, and that, we got to look at the Word of God in a new light. There is no salvation grace except for those who believe the truth of the gospel message. You must believe in the gospel message. Look at Ephesians 1.13. In Him, you also, when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation and believed in Him, were sealed with the promised Holy Spirit. That is a powerful verse. Again, the whole thing. I could read five or six verses, but I'm trying to keep it simple today. So, read the rest of Ephesians 1, too. It's, it's, it's just so powerful. John, again, John 1.14 is so deep that we could spend literally hours just discussing that one verse. It, it's, it's, it's got that much depth. At, but, but again, I want to focus on these five words here, full of grace and truth. Because Jesus, who he's talking about here, came full of grace and truth. Did he not? If you are full of Jesus, you will be full of grace and truth. And I know you want to be full of Jesus. I know I do. I know you do too. If our church is full of grace and truth, okay, then we will, be, we will have what Jesus has. We, he, he, what did he say in his prayer? He wants us to be one in him, just as the Father and him are one. He wants a relationship with each other and with him that is so tight, that is so strong and so powerful, that, that we look like Jesus, we smell like Jesus, we, we, people see us, we are the reflection of Jesus. And, and that is the most beautiful thing that you can be, is a reflection of, of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. But you see, Jesus was naturally full of grace and truth. He didn't lean one way 
or the other way, did he? But our problem is, and I know this is true to me, and I think it's true of everyone in this room. Our problem is, we are not that way. We tend to lean one way or the other. We really do. And, and if you're really honest with yourself, you will see that naturally you, you, you lean towards the truth or you lean towards grace. And, and if you're around me long enough, especially in leadership, I, I know where you're at. You know, and you know where I'm at. You know, I naturally lean towards, what do you think I naturally lean towards? Somebody said truth, somebody said grace. I definitely lean towards grace. But I'm learning that I have to work on the truth part. So um, here's the funny thing. I've noticed as, I've changed, as I'm changing, the people that, are, that love me so much because I was so graceful all the time, when they see me kind of moving, trying to get balanced like Jesus, they ain't liking it. And the ones that were leaning toward the truth and didn't like the way I was, are probably starting to see a little shift that I'm trying to be balanced. Because that's the way Jesus was. Jesus, He, he is our example in all things. We, no matter what you say, whether it be forgiveness, uh, mercy, grace, everything, Jesus is our example. And, and we have the Word of God to help us, don't we? The reason why I lean towards grace, I'm, I'm being real to you, is because when I came to Jesus Christ, I needed a ton of grace. I needed a ton of grace because I was just a, I was one of them poor, wretched sinners. I wasn't that, I didn't grow up in the church and I didn't just, I wasn't always there. Man, I was like way out there, you know. And I needed a, I never got over the grace that Jesus gave me for the forgiveness of sins. I'll never forget when, when I realized that all my sin. For my first 26 years on this earth was forgiven. It was like the, the, uh, the 500 pound gorilla was just off my back. And all the guilt, because all, Satan still tried me. I had to learn all this that therefore there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. I had to learn that because Satan was still trying to condemn me. And let me know how no good I was, I wasn't worthy. And re- reminding me daily of my, of my sins. You know, But that's not who I was anymore. With Jesus, great, grace and truth is always perfectly balanced. All throughout the Scriptures you see it. Jesus never shared grace at the expense of truth. And He never spoke truth at the expense of grace. That is so important because some, sometimes we can't see. We, we have cloudy views because I'm a grace man. I, I, I have my best friend at work is truth and i'm grace and me and him tend to balance each other he's even said that he goes because he doesn't see things through the eyes of grace like i do and i don't see things through the eyes of truth all the time like he does so we have to help each other out to keep us straight because he's hard really hardcore about a lot of things and i'm really just a, a sometimes just like a marshmallow you know and full of grace all the time and and, and that's not and either way is not you gotta, you got to be balanced like Jesus. We need to be a church that is full of grace and truth. I'm telling you, that is a beautiful thing. The combination. Just like Jesus is. I don't want to say just like Jesus was, because Jesus still is full of grace and truth. So, here, so here's what we got to do. First off, do you want to be full of Jesus? Some of you do. Do you want to be full of Jesus? Yes. We want to, do you want to love like Jesus? Because when you love like Jesus, guess what? You're going to lead like Jesus. Because you can't lead like Jesus if you don't love like Jesus. Because leadership starts, everything starts with love. Without love, we, we are nothing, And as the Bible tells us. Amen? Do you want others to see Jesus in you? I hope you do, because... It's so vital to the world that they see something different in us. They, they, they don't need to see just another person in the world. They need to see something different in us. They need to see Jesus. I believe when we are balanced like Jesus, that we, we can reach this world for Jesus Christ in amazing ways. Because a grace-starved and true-starved world needs Jesus. They need Jesus. That is who everybody needs. 
full of grace and truth. So how can the world see Jesus full of grace and truth? How, how do you think they can see Jesus? How, how in the world can the, can the world see Jesus who is full of grace and truth? How can they do it? Through us, through the church. We gotta, we gotta, we gotta, ex- we gotta be an extension of Jesus and, and show the world what grace and truth looks like. Okay? When the church, you and I, because we are the church, not this building. This building is not the church. We are the church, right? You and I, I truly believe in all my heart that many people will be saved, just like they were in Acts. You know, we've seen, a, seen people coming to Jesus because of, of who they were. So, question, how can you be full of Jesus? I'm going to give you three ways that you can be full of Jesus. Number one, we need, I'm going to put it up on the screen here, we need the compassion of grace. We need the compassion of grace. Jesus' life on earth was full of compassionate grace, wasn't it? Do you, do, you, do you see a, better, a more compassionate man than Jesus? So he, of course, has got to be our example. Like I said, he's got to be our example. We need to treat others the same way that Jesus did, the way he treated others. We have to, that's why we're studying the Gospels right now. We're trying to look. I stay in the Gospels every day. Of my, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping to stay every day of my life. I don't want to leave the Gospels. I go other places, too. I go in the Old Testament and, and other things. I do three, uh, three places a, a day. But we need to be in the Gospels. We need to see how Jesus treats people, how we should be treating people. Most people that, that we call sinners that are out there in the world, most of them, they don't want to be around most Christians. They don't want to be around us, the, the people that we, they call, that we call Christians. And why do you think that is? I think a big part of it is they hear and see truth without grace. They hear what we're against, don't they? they you know, we, we'll be quick to tell them what we're against, but do we show them the grace? Right? Compassionate grace. And as we study the life of Jesus, time after time, what do we see? We see Jesus, He showed compassion, loving grace, especially to the brokenhearted. He's, he's near the brokenhearted, isn't He? Those in need, Jesus cared about those in need. Those who, uh, those who were sick and hurting and, uh, the, and the lost sinners, Jesus cared about them, didn't He? So why do you think the Pharisees called Jesus a friend of sinners? In, in, in Luke 7.34, the Pharisees call Jesus a friend of sinners because Jesus was full of grace toward the sinner. Just look at uh, the first thing that popped in my head was the Samaritan woman. You know, we know the Jews and Samaritans, they hated each other, you know. And here Jesus was, you know, Jesus didn't let his prejudices, he didn't let things that, um, because they were different, that didn't stop Jesus from ministering to people, did it? And it shouldn't stop us. Just because someone looks different, just because someone acts different, it, it shouldn't be that way. And I'll tell you this, as a pastor, I have seen truth without grace crushes people it crushes people i've seen it with my own eyes it crushes people and it and it and it makes me angry and a righteous anger because i believe god is angry with people that are that are like that so when you study the gospels every sinner that jesus met they knew something there's something they knew about jesus if you look at the gospels they knew that this man loves me they knew that Jesus loves me. Do they know, that, do, do they people know that, they, that we love them because they're different, because they're maybe doing something that's deplorable, detestable, whatever? They knew that Jesus cared about them. Do people know that we really care? They knew that Jesus wanted to help them. He, wanted, he met them right where they were, didn't he? He, he met them right where, and he helped them. He, they knew that Jesus desired what was best for them. You know, that's rare in this world, isn't it? That someone really cares about you. I want what's best for you. That, that's kind of rare, but that's the way Jesus was. And they knew that they could really have a relationship with Him. He was someone that, wow, there's something that was so different about Him that they, even in the midst of their sin and everything, they, they, they were attracted to Jesus, weren't they? We need the compassion of grace just like Jesus. 
So how can we be full of Jesus? Number two, we need the number two, we need the conviction of truth. Jesus was full of grace and truth. Okay? It wasn't all grace and no truth. It wasn't all truth and no grace. There are so many churches today that are full of grace. I, I, they're, they're just so graceful, man. They, they, they just exemplify grace. But they lack the truth. They are tolerant of everything. That's why we have pastors, and I'm not beating up on homosexuals, but that's just one sin of many. That sin ain't no, that, that's a bad sin, but, it's, but all sin is. But, but the church has gotten so tolerant of sin that, that, that you, we even allow um, pastors to be homosexuals. Um, um, it's like we love everyone, and we should, but not at the expense of truth. We, we have to... We have to look at Jesus. The Jesus of our culture right now is anything goes. You know, it's just like anything goes. Unfortunately, that is us actually crept into the church today because there's a lot, there's a gospel message. God is love. Yes, He is. He is God is love. But God is also wrath. We forget that part. Amen. Amen. That, that's, that's exactly where we're at. And this is, a, I don't know where, who, who quoted this, but I'm going to give you a quote from someone. I love this. this. Listen to this. A God without wrath, think about that, brings men without sin into a kingdom without judgment through the ministry without a cross. That is powerful. I don't know who wrote, who, who that, that is powerful. And my goal as a pastor is to give everybody grace. I want to give everybody grace. I want you to give me grace too. But if I want to be like Jesus, I cannot do that at the expense of truth. Can't do it. I would be, I would be, it would be wrong. Because Jesus was full of grace and truth. I'm gonna, you're going to hear that a lot. That's what I'm going to keep saying. Grace says there's a way to God for anyone. Ain't that awesome? Truth says there's only one way to God. And we know that the world doesn't believe that Jesus is the, is the only way to the Father, right? Grace says redemption is possible. Praise God for redemption. Truth says repentance and turning from sin is necessary. You cannot be saved without the repentance and turning from your sin. Can't do it. Can't possibly do it. Grace says I love you just the way you are, and we should. But truth says... I love you too much to let you stay that way. And that's the hard part. That's when it gets tough because we have to, if you really love someone, you will tell them the tough things. And that's a hard thing to do because most people don't want to hear the truth. <laughs> I'm just being honest. Grace says, I love sinners, and we should. Truth says, I hate sin. If God, God had to send his son to the cross because of sin, so we better hate sin. Grace says, anybody can come to God. Truth says everybody must come through Jesus. Grace says God is love. Truth says God is holy. Grace says there's a heaven and you can go there. Ain't that awesome? But truth says there's a hell and you can go there too. Because it's real. It's heaven and hell. It's, it's, a, it's, it's a choice. Grace says there's a salvation for all those who deserve it. Desire it, sorry. Truth says there's a judgment for those who don't. Just the real thing. Grace says you're saved by grace through faith. Truth says faith without works is dead. How can we be full of Jesus? We need the compassion of grace, and we need, also need the conviction of truth. And there's one more thing we need. Number three. We need the combination of of grace and truth because they go together. The absence of being full of grace and truth is toxic. It's toxic in our relationships with others. The absence of full, being full of grace or truth poisons the church. It poisons the church. I'm telling you, I've seen it on both sides. And not just this church. I'm talking about all churches. It can poison the church. 
I hear gracers say to me, where's the grace? Where's the grace? And I hear the truthers say, where's the truth? And here I am standing as a pastor in the middle, listening to the people that are full of truth hitting me one side. The people full of grace hit me from the other side. And I'm standing there saying, I need to be balanced. I need, as a pastor, I cannot let people sway me to grace, and I can't let people sway me towards truth. I have to be balanced right in the middle. And that is when I can be an effective pastor. When I don't let the heat of people's, uh, and people will leave the church, because that pastor, where's the grace? That pastor, where's the truth? I'm going to tell you where I'm at. My goal, and that's one of the reasons we're doing this lead like Jesus, I, I want to be full of grace and full of truth. And I want the leaders to be full of grace and full of truth. And I want the members to be full of grace and full of truth. And when we can do that, we're going to love people like Jesus loved people. We're going to be effective. We're going to be a witness. And a witness that can, the the sinners are going to look at us. And I'm telling you, when I came to Christ, here's what, I was going through some rough times. What I did was I turned around looking around and I'm thinking, man, my, my friends, it ain't helping me. All we're doing is drinking and gambling and and smoking pot and all this. Okay, so I got that. Now I'm looking at, there's a couple Christians at my work, and I'm looking at them, I'm like, something different about them. So I went to them, and guess what they did for me? One gave me a Bible. I needed prayer so bad. I didn't even believe in prayer, but I just knew I needed something. So I I, I said, you think you could pray for me? I mean, and 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 believe me, back then, I'm going back 33 years ago, 30, 33 years ago, I, I didn't know what prayer... I mean, everybody prays, but you really, you really don't understand the power of prayer until you, um, until you actually get into it. And, and, but um, seriously, it's, it's difficult as a pastor. But I want to tell you one thing. Grace without truth is very deceptive. Very deceptive. You've got to be careful with that. Truth without grace is very defective, isn't it? Grace minus truth equals, what the world, liberalism. I mean, do we want to be a church? Do you want to be a church that is liberal like like the the world? Do you want to be that kind of church? That's not a church. That's it. Because the people that want grace but no truth, are quick to overlook everything. It's just, just overlook everything. And point towards grace. They point towards grace apart from truth. There's no absolutes. That's the world, isn't it? There's no absolutes. You know, they, we just do what we want. You know, if that's what we want to do, there, you know, there's no absolutes in the world. On the other hand, truth minus grace equals legalism. Now, I don't know about you. I'm going to ask you, do you want to be a church of legalism? I, I think we got a good example of that from the Pharisees, don't we? We got a great picture of what a legalistic church would look like. We would run it like the Pharisees did. You know, the truthers might think, hey, that's, that's pretty good. But no, it's really not. It, and it, it's not good. There are people that are full of truth and not grace. They're quick to judge, very quick to judge, and slow to forgive always pointing their finger at someone. That's what the Pharisees did, didn't it? That's always pointing their fingers to someone. That's just not right. You know, grace plus truth equals liberty. Grace wants to free you, doesn't it? But only the truth will set you free. Right? I don't want to be full of grace and empty of truth. And I don't want to be empty of truth and full of grace. I, I, it just doesn't work. You know? I don't want the church to be full of grace and empty of truth. And I don't want the church to be full of truth and empty of, the great, uh, empty of grace. We, we just, it just doesn't work that way. Because Jesus was not 50% grace and 50% truth. Jesus was 100% grace and 100% truth. And that's who we, we, we're trying to follow Him. So we got to be like Jesus and be full of that. On the one hand, Jesus was all grace. He welcomed sinners, didn't He? He welcomed tax collectors. He welcomed prostitutes. He welcomed little children. Sometimes we, don't, we have a problem with little children. They make too much noise. They're too ratty. And I'm guilty of that. And I, that's, that wasn't Jesus. 
That's not Jesus. So if you're complaining about the children, look at Jesus, man. Jesus had them children come to me. Even the, the, the disciples try to say, get away, you know, get the children. No, 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 no. I got to watch myself on that because Jesus welcomed little children. Jesus healed the lepers, didn't he? He healed the blind, didn't he? And before Jesus died, a convicted felon who was on the cross with him, guess what he did? He received grace before he drew his last breath. Isn't that awesome? That we can receive Jesus Christ before we take our last breath and be with him in heaven. Live our, uh, that's, that is grace. That is grace. That, that's the kind of grace that we have with Jesus. Because Jesus was full of grace, but he was also full of truth. Jesus condemned the religious leaders, didn't he? Oh, he, he laid them out, didn't he? He called them liars. He called them hypocrites. Jesus talked about hell more than he talked about heaven. You know, we, we forget there is a, you know, and, and even the gospel message today leaves out hell like it's not even there. Just like Francis Chan wrote a book called Erasing Hell. Well, some pastors, some, some churches want to erase hell. Like there's no way a God of love would send anybody to hell. That's not the God I know of. That's not the God I read about in the Bible. Jesus said, if you want to be my disciple, what do you have to do? You have to deny yourself, take up your cross, and follow me. Okay? Jesus told Peter, get away from me, Satan, when he didn't understand the truth of the mission that Jesus had. You know, that, think about that. I mean, he, he called Peter. Whew. When you are full of self, and I am full of self, we will be one of two things. We will be full of grace and empty of truth, or you will be full of truth and empty of grace. So let's not be full of ourselves. How about that? And I'm talking to me too. The more you are full of Jesus, the more you'll be filled with both grace and truth. And that's, that's the balance that we need. The more our church is full of Jesus, the more we will be filled with both grace and truth. And that, it, Can't you see the beautiful picture that I'm painting here? How it can be? Because the majority of unbelievers who don't come to Jesus only know two kinds of Christians. They see the Christians who speak the truth without grace, and they see the Christians who speak grace without truth. You don't think they're confused? They're very confused. Because who's confusing them? A lot of times, we are. We're confusing them. They're looking around at us. We look so much like the world. They're like, well, I don't need that. I can get that. I don't. We, we have to be different. We have, we're set apart. We should all want this. We should really desire this, this grace and truth. When people walk into this church, we, we, they should know that we are a church of grace. I don't care what they look like, what they smell like. We, we love them up. We love them just as they are when they walk through that door. It's not about, because that is grace. We're showing them grace. We're, we're not, and, and James tells us, we're not to uh, show partiality. We're not to, uh, if someone comes in here that's all rich, like I can tell you one time, I, I did this, and I couldn't even believe I did it. We, you guys might not even know he came. We had a senator here one, one Sunday. And guess what? I didn't even make a big deal about it. You probably, did you know that? Did anybody know we had a senator come here before? Uh, he came here, told me who he was. I didn't even announce it, like make a big deal about it, because I just didn't feel led to do that, you know. And, uh, and if I would have put him in, the, hey, you're a distinguished guest here, you know. No, it, I shouldn't treat him any different than a homeless man coming through the door. You know, that, that's the way we have to do it. And he, he sent a letter afterwards thanking him for coming and everything. But some of you didn't even know he was here. Did anybody know he was here? Wow, nobody knew. Then that was good. That is good. We need to be a church in the spirit of grace. We've got to love them. Just as they are, right? Some of you today have a relationship that is not right in the eyes of Jesus. There is real tension between you and someone else. Possibly bitterness or even unresolved anger, even unforgiveness. That ain't good. You don't, what does God's Word say about that? God, God's Word tells us, there you go. 
you know, you can throw your worship, throw your tithe, throw all that stuff out the window. If you ain't right with your brother, you got to get that right first. So I'm going to urge anybody in this church today, if you have any resentment, any, any hostility towards anyone in this church, before you come up here, before you come in here worshiping and tithing and all that stuff, you need to get that right. That is ugly in the eyes of Jesus Christ. And it's ugly in my eyes. Because I want a church that loves one another. And we cannot be a church that doesn't love one another. We have to be a church that loves one another. So, And I don't even know if there's anybody that has that here. I'm just saying, if you do, you know who you are and you know who the person is. And I'm talking to me too. And hopefully there's none of that in here. That would be awesome. But I highly doubt any church could say, hey, we all love each other. We don't have nothing against anybody. I don't think there's a church in America that's got there yet. I, I, I don't think they're there, but we've got to strive to be there. And it starts one person, one heart at a time. Every person in this church should know that, that you love them, that we love each other. We, we, have to, we have to work on that. That's part of leading like Jesus, loving like Jesus. We, we have to continue to do that, okay? We may have given someone the truth, but not grace. We might be just gotten our feet dug, dug in and like, uh-uh, not, I'm, not, I'm not budging a bit. So I would just say, so maybe there's someone that you need to give grace to. On the other hand, some of you probably have enabled people, and this could be your pastor too because I'm guilty of the grace part, enabled people who are not living right and who are not who they need to be. Out of the spirit of love, we need to talk to them and, and help them. You know, because... Uh, we should, if, you lo- if we love someone, we're going to tell them the tough things, aren't we? We have to be so full of grace that you, can, that you say, no, let me say it a different way. You, some of us have been so full of grace that you say, that's okay. No, they're okay. I, I, my old thing used to be, I'm just going to keep praying about it. I don't want to confront the person. I want to show grace to them. I got to stop that. I got to start confronting people in love. In love. It's got to be in the spirit of love. If I, if I approach someone in any other way than love, then I'm, then I'm be- better off not going to them. Right? Maybe you need to go to that person and speak the truth in love. And, and just let them know, you know. But again, get your heart right first. The Bible says we are ministers of reconciliation, doesn't it? Drawing them to Jesus, being full of grace and truth. When people walk in this church, I want them to find grace and truth. I really do. I, I, we can't compromise either one. We, we have to, and I know it's a hard thing for, for it's hard for me. I'm, I'm battling it right now. There is one place that we can always go to to find Grace and truth. Where do you think that is? I think I heard it. The cross. Amen. The cross. The cross. When you look at the cross, what you hear grace say is, you are sinful. You are terribly sinful. But your sins can be forgiven. Isn't that, isn't that awesome? That no matter what sin we commit, they can be forgiven. Then truth says, the only way you can be forgiven is because Jesus died for your sins and you must receive Him as Lord and Savior. Grace, again, says forgiveness is free. Truth said is not cheap. It cost Jesus His blood, didn't it? And you must be under His blood. We must be under His blood if you want to be forgiven of your sins. I just want to share with you, I share with Wednesday night, um, one day this week, I got this. I never had this before. I was at work, and I got this this urge that I I needed to do communion. And I'm I'm at work. It's like nine o'clock in the morning, which is halfway through my day almost. Um, and I, and I'm thinking I need communion bad. So I was going to leave work. That's how bad I, it was. Like so strong. I've never done that. I felt this urgency. So when I got off work, I did work the whole day, and I came here, and I had a 45 minute. I'm sorry, I time everything. I'm like that, that thing on, not, not the cookie monster, but the one that does the counting, the count person. I'm, I'm like, you, you can ask my wife. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I count everything. 
So I spent, I looked, I started exactly 3.30, and I got done at 4.15, so I had a 45-minute service, me and the Lord, on a communion service. Uh, it was just awesome, and there is so much power in communion. We are going to be doing communion a lot more than we do now, I can guarantee you that. But if we are full of Jesus, we'll be full of grace and truth. So I want you to think about this. How amazing, again, will this church look if we are full of grace and truth just like Jesus? I can tell you what it will look like. Jesus will be smiling down on His church, won't He? He'll be smiling down on His church because we should come here with one purpose. And that is to please the Father. Please. And Jesus, sitting at the right hand of the Father, interceding on our behalf, I... I want nothing more to walk out of here today at this service to say that Jesus was pleased with what we did, what, what, we, what we spoke and what we did, and how we treated people and everything. So I want you to uh, please think about where, where you lean towards one way or the other, whether you lean towards the grace or to the truth more, and work on that other area. You have to work hard. I work hard. At, it's, it, it, i got to fight that all the time because I don't want... I don't want to stay who I am. I want to grow. I want to be more like Jesus. And if I stay like myself, I'll just keep being the gracer. I'll be all grace. I'm not all grace. I do, but I'll be leaning 80, maybe, I don't know, 60, 70, whatever it is, percent that way, and that's not the way we're supposed to be. I've got to be 100% full of grace and 100% full of truth. So I, I can effectively lead this church and effectively be the example. So if you see some changes in my leadership style, you're going to, because I want to be full of grace and truth. I gotta, I gotta go to people and say the tough things and the hard things. And believe me, there's some people that I have been, I've been letting grace slide down a hill for like way too long. And it's time to have that tough talk, because I can't just keep letting that person, these people, go just slippery down the slope. And as they keep going down, I'm just looking at them, saying, I'll keep praying for them, but they're not doing nothing. They're just doing. They're just keep on going. They're just and and. And I, and I told someone this because somebody came, some people have come to me about things and, and here's what I told them. Here's what I've learned from leadership training. If you continue, if, if someone's a, a bad leader or not doing their job or whatever and I let them get away with it, it's no longer, they're not the problem. I'm the problem. I'm the problem because I'm allowing it to happen and I got to stop it. That's why you're going to see some changes in leadership in this church. We are going to lead full of grace and full of truth. That's my prayer. So keep praying.